Hello and welcome to this podcast. I'm Vincenzo and who are you? I am in front of me. A human being to the latest scientific research. I am Necropolo and we are both uh, Commodore 64 musicians. That means uh, we create music with numbers on an ancient obsolete, obsolete. computer. That's uh, wonderful. That's the last uh, 64 kilobyte uh, corner of the world unfucked. Yep. Yeah, I guess so. So, there was a challenge in 2021. Yes, it was a brain fuck of mine. <laughs> basically, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about the idea, yeah? And uh, it was basically a challenge for myself because, you know, New Year's resolutions and stuff like that. I wanted to do something that keeps me occupied throughout the whole year. And I came up with the idea that I'm going to make music each month and not just a music, but a seed music on the Commodore 64. Okay, this wasn't a challenge enough because, yeah, I got a lot of time at that time, so yeah, let's spice it up. So I joined because I haven't done any Commodore 64 music in 2020, partly because of uh, the pandemic and the uh, job and, you know, it was a mixed up year. But uh, 2021, I thought, mm, maybe I take the challenge with you. Yes, and, and then asked you that are you up for using a different editor each month? Yeah, and I was pretty easy going with that. That proven to be the mindfuck part of the challenge because most of these editors are were sort of alien to me. I haven't worked with them yeah, before. Yeah, me neither. That was the point of it, you know, to just experiment with these music editors, come up with something and then they just do some music so yeah basically that was the whole point of this challenge to challenge myself make some music try out different things because i thought um, i'm just kind of used to do the same thing over and over and the idea was if if i'm going to experiment with different music editors then this would you know just widen the view of the knowledge and, and and everything that is connected to the seed chip itself and the seed music. So different methods, different composing techniques that each editor requires that I thought it's going to be fun, it's going to be challenging. Definitely and, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how, wow, it is a hell of a challenge, but more about it later. So yeah, basically the whole point was challenge myself and I was lucky enough that you joined me because without you, probably oh. I could, could, not fi- <laughs> could not finish it. I <laughs> understood the other way around that I was lucky because it was a hell of a challenge, partly, and partly it was a hell of a fun. And also, it opened a lot of interesting areas, either of composing and either of uh, the Commodore 64 music creating workflow. Yeah, the workflow of each editor was, well, similar but different enough to just learn more about the seed chip itself and, and the music required more and different uh, approach. approach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if uh, it's a GT challenge and it's driving and we are the race drivers or crash test dummies or something like that, then these things are cars. Uh, do you have any uh, special experience with any of them? You mean cars? Uh, okay, <laughs> so cars, uh, we are car guys, so Vinci is driving um, Hyundai? I guess it's pronounced Hyundai. Hyundai. Yeah. It's a Hyundai road legal version of a rally car, and I do the same. I have a Mitsubishi turbo stuff, so uh, it's not bragging, we are just absolute petrol heads. So we approach this whole thing as um, car test driving, right? Yes? Yes, exactly. So race cars. Each editor is a different car and you test drive it and then you just, you know, summarize the experience. Yeah, sure. Just just like the Grand Tour in the TV or, you know, uh, what was the top here? Clarkson, Hammond and May did. Yeah. We, so... we did this with the editors, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So we created at the end, we will reveal that uh, a sort of uh, ranking, but uh, please do not uh, take it very seriously and also with a grain of salt, because it's uh, subjective opinions. 
Yeah, as a start, the, the list of the editors that we tried out, it was also just a personal list, nothing like this is the best, this should be the best, this is the worst. No, it was just a list that we narrowed down from like 20 editors. Yep. And it was just, yeah, nothing really special that we wanted to try out. It was mostly, we knew the editors because we heard about them, but probably never tried yep. 90% of them. Yeah, ever. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the final ranking is not a general ranking. Unfortunately, it was a... How was it called? What do all? It's a... Oh, it was the... Uh, one of the guys on the forums, they call this the Magyar Duel. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Because we ended up uh, having this challenge only the two of us, unfortunately. It would be very great to have a third or a fourth uh, challenger input on these editors, but unfortunately we didn't have. A couple of guys joined in certain rounds. Yeah, yeah, in certain rounds. But yeah, but on one hand, I I was a bit sad because it sounded like a good challenge. You know, I expected that more people will join us because they probably, you know, found it interesting or could have found it interesting. Yep. But at the end, I understand that this is this is tough to just make a music each month with with your favorite editor but with a different one each month learning a new thing experimenting that how it works what the numbers do and and sometimes there is no built-in help or help file or, or a pdf whatever yeah it's not easy and i get it yeah it was an absolute mindfuck in a sort of positive way but uh, considering time consuming it took a lot of time actually despite the fact that uh, we finished the tunes uh, around the latest day of the month yes, but that was usual yeah but usually but <laughs> it required quite a research before to be able to do anything working with the actual tracker or editor so i can understand still so it's not like trying to find excuses of why we uh, spent so little time with editors but it's like yeah we have a life we have things to do and at the end what we could spend on these editors it was limited However, at the end, the quality of the tracks that we came up with shows that basically it's doable. Yep. It's doable to create music each month with a different editor on the Commodore 64. So the challenge is completed and achieved and is unlocked. Wait, absolutely. Sure. <laughs> yes, is there cheering sounds here? We pop up some champagne. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Yeah, and do you have any favorite bad or favor favorite good uh, <laughs> moments during the challenge? Shall we talk about it right now or when we are there at the um, just, specific uh, moments? Just think about some special thing that uh, comes first to your mind. Okay, the very first thing that comes to my mind is, is basically Sjós Peretz. That's... Actually, a famous editor in Hungary because it was made by a Hungarian guy in the early 90s, I think in 1991 or so. And uh, a lot of the musicians of that era used it in Hungary and they came up with great tracks and, and, and yeah, very sure. nice demo tracks or, or whatever. But to me, it was the most painful editor to use. It crashed a lot. It was just not straightforward at all. And max respect to everyone who made great <laughs> music with it because I couldn't it, it just oh sorry but that that was really a fucked up thing it was like driving a very old car that totally made sense around its time but uh, you know if you take a car from the 70s or 80s that was all right around the time let's say um or the Lada or something like that and you compare it to an absolutely average car today that has ABS that has modern engine that consumes um, just a fraction of the fuel uh, and so on and so on forth so they are not very enjoyable to drive today yeah but not in the old timer way but in the crap way yeah these old cars and old stuff uh, don't make too much sense today so absolutely I, I agree my special moment was a deaf one I think but not uh, in the bad way but the good way People seem to be afraid of it a little, 
Yeah, it has a reputation. Yes, it has a reputation that it's a very hard and complex and, and you know, it's an abstract thing. And it's abstract indeed, because uh, I only started to know it through Goto 80. You know, this guy makes some absolutely arbitrary music. So uh, it doesn't sound like it's coming from Commodore 64 or it's coming from uh, anything that uh, produces music. It's absolutely out of this world. His sounds, his, his music and, and everything. And I believe that uh, this tracker was uh, able to do only this. But no, it's like driving a UFO, absolutely. <laughs> it's completely yeah. different from anything else. Uh, I've ever tried, but uh, still, it uh, makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. Yes, it was a surprise because I expected that it's gonna be tough to work with, but in a way, it, it makes a lot of sense and, and it's very logical. Absolutely. So, major props to Frantic, who created this editor, because it's amazing, and surely I will return to it sometime in the future. Yes, and, and extra thank you to him, because he was kind enough to chat with me and, and show me the editor, and, and show me some tricks before I actually started to work with this editor, and yeah, thank you, Frantic. Yeah, it, it was a cool experience, but I also had the Shosh Peretz as my lowest points in the challenge because of the freezings. I am familiar with a future composer that's a little bit uh, similar to the workflow and considering uh, these tiny clever things, Schorspert is improved much. But this freezing, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why, why I did it, but it uh, kept on freezing, I don't know, every five minutes or something. So... Yeah, and especially it, it kept freezing during saving anything in it. Yeah. And, and that was just crazy yes saving and uh, creating instruments that are basically uh, quite um, an important point of making music yes saving your stuff and making a sound but still i i'm not sure that it was not caused by some borked disc or, or yeah or just a hacked version like someone yeah. stole it from someone and just spread it uh, pff, no idea but this was the official version on CSDB. I don't think it was like this way back in time. Yeah, or the people who worked with it, they knew what what they can do with it. Like not like us, where we experimented with it, yep. like to try to learn it. But probably back then, people just shared their uh, experience and they knew what they can do and what's not allowed to do. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, shall we start month by month? Okay. Yep. So, let's start with the month-by-month -month comparison, and uh, we made a, a sheet with numbers and ratings. So, we made ratings of the workflow, ease of use, features, sound and overall score. Each editor could have points from 0 to 10, where 10 is the best. Obviously, the best rating for that thing. And did you give a 0 to anyone? Almost. Almost. Almost, but I changed my mind and I think you know we uh -huh. <laughs> what got the I, I point did, one. I didn't. I didn't give a zero. I have the soft heart, you know, soft spot <laughs> for Condor 64 trackers. Okay. January. January. It was the GMC. Originally we wanted to use the 1.2 version because that was available on the CSDB and we heard about it that it's a, it's a good editor. But then we had a suggestion from Watsek. Yeah, Watsky. 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 So, Watsky. yeah. And then we switched to the version 2. And that's basically an improved version that Watsky used uh, a lot. And, and yeah, we gave it a try. Yeah, and uh, it was a very cool drive when we used the car analogy. Because uh, GMC version 2 is a um, prototype race car tailored completely to Wacky. So it's his racing seat, his uh, tires, settings, everything. So it's so much tailored to him that it was uh, like driving someone else's good car. Yeah, during an endurance race you just switch yeah. the place, but the settings of the car is yeah. always the same. Absolutely, and it was a very good experience, however, I couldn't drive the fracture of it as he does. Yeah. But if you compare the time that he spent with this editor and how much time did we 
So it, it, it's a completely different thing. But yes, I agree. It's tailored to him and he knows it inside out. Yeah, and yeah. I'm envy him because this GMC is actually a pretty nice, uh, nice tracker. Everything is on one screen, but there is no built-in help. There is nothing really. So it was a lot of experiment that I did to find out what what's doing what, and I, I couldn't figure out how the filter works. It's just, yeah, it's something that sounded yeah. okay, but I don't <laughs> know why. I'm quite familiar with the previous version, 1.0 and 1.6, 1.2 maybe. I, yeah, I can, something like that, yeah. yeah. And the only thing I know that uh, there was no instructions for this uh, filter use. So I started to use it like pots on hardware scenes stuff and it started to make sense. But I still don't know that uh, considering code or settings what uh, they do. Yeah, exactly. It's like trying out the smallest and the largest yeah. number and then <laughs> compare the result. Yeah, yeah. That, that was to oh. me as well. Uh, absolutely. So, in a way, the sound design of this editor was like uh, sound design on a analog synth. Just, uh, you know, adjusting the pot meters. Yeah, basically. There was a funny yeah. thing uh, that uh, we accidentally started to use two different versions. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because... Uh, we have two different uh, prototype uh, editors. Yes, uh, the version that is yep. available on CSDB, and I downloaded it from there, uh, that saves unpacked music. And it, it is like 80 blocks per music on the disc. Yep. And I had a version that I um, received from Wacky. Is it the right way to pronounce his name? I don't know. Wacek is the, yeah, the, the proper. Yeah, but, but it's like a, a nickname of a nickname. Nickname right? of a nickname. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wacky. So our great Polish friend, Adam. Adam. He's a very cool guy. We met a couple of years ago on Arrow Party. He did a marvelous uh, Sid uh, DJ set. I had a music packer version that exported the packed music and loaded it as well. It's like a prototype car with or without wings. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say <laughs> wheels. We do without wheels. <laughs> yeah, tires or not. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, okay, let's, let's check my notes. Yeah, I already mentioned that the, that the filter is... It is a bit uh, different or, or challenging. The ease of use, it's, it wasn't that hard because it, it no. worked with the usual waveform numbers, usual gate on gate on... Yeah, that, that's basically the, the same for everything, but it was obvious where to put those numbers. The, the the sectors and the pattern data and and the order list that was very obvious because Absolutely. that's also the usual way how would you do it on the c64 so overall i find it pretty okay yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It was a good thing, and uh, the filter itself, because it works a different way from other trackers, I think it is easy to create very heavy sounds with it. Yeah, if you find that right amount of yep. uh, filtering and whatever, but it, it's just, it, it's a bit of an on the experimental side yeah, to me. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, um, it absolutely feels like an experimental prototype car. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's very minimalistic on the UI side, yep. but everything is on the screen, everything is very well visible, but you know, with my current knowledge and experience, I would not use this editor a lot because it's just not the most comfortable and not the most effective way of working, to me at least. About future use, uh, I may use it in the future a couple of times maybe, but it will require some preparations because uh, creating a tune in this editor took an immense amount of time. So it was one of the most labor-intensive editors, but well, trackers uh, in the challenge, I think. So it requires a lot of uh, handiwork. Yes, definitely. I agree with that. So if whenever I am on a holiday and I have one week to create the music, it's a GMC <laughs> the way to go. <laughs> I think uh, we, we, we need to mention that probably you prefer this one because of the driver is very rough sounding. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, it's very suitable for your style and uh, for, for the metal thing that, that you... Absolutely. Yeah. And I used back in the time of 1.2, 1.6, I don't know, of the same editor, but it was not uh, this improved version. So, yeah, it's a heavy, labor-intensive, but uh, very cool tracker. Yeah. Okay, so 
Let's go on to February. That was... In February we tested Seed Factory 2 by Laxity. He is still developing this, this editor. Uh, it's a cross-platform editor. It runs on PC, Linux and Mac. And to me, this was the surprise of the year. Whoa. That I actually like this editor so much that I completely switched to it from Seed Wizard. Because this is the best suitable and the best fitting uh, editor and workflow to me and to my style. And it's just awesome. It's still in development and in the future I expect a lot more exciting features like multi-speed and, and, and things like that. So it's gonna be even more awesome than it is now. At sure, and the thing that I liked about it the most was the different drivers. They are like different sound presets. I don't know, five or six of them. You can sound like Rob Hubbard, you can sound like a very clean hi-fi uh, Sid, a uh, modern Sid editor. You can uh, sound old school settings. They were great. The workflow for me was not too familiar and I was very slow with it, actually, because uh, I'm more like a traditional tracker uh, workflow way, like fast tracker or impulse tracker, things like that. And uh, editors that uh, or trackers that fit uh, that workflow, I'm more comfortable with. And this is something different. Some things were a little bit confusing for me, but uh, still, it's a great editor and it sounds great. And also, it has a Go Tracker 2 file uh, importer. Yes, it, it came handy when uh, Stinson made this competition. Do you remember that? Uh, that was a yep. competition on CSDB. Yeah, yeah. He released the the Go Tracker file of his music, and he just asked people to do whatever they want with it. Yeah. Develop it into a new song or just extend it, whatever. And it turned out to be a really nice competition. And I actually used Seed Factory to load the Go, oh. Go Tracker work file. And yeah, it, it was just, you know, I cannot really explain it. Why does it fit me? It's just, it's just good. It's just easy to work with. I can see everything and I can understand everything on the first look. Yeah. I cannot really explain it. it it's just it's just logical and makes sense, everything what this Seed Factory does. Yeah, it's a one screen and everything on the screen uh, thing. And it also has a wonderful, I don't know, border picture where everything uh, is explained. The, it's a yes, help. Uh, the help overlay. Yeah, they, help they, they overlay. call it the yes. help overlay. Yes. It's very good. It's just like, uh, you know, like guitars. So your favorite guitar, maybe I cannot play it. Yeah, uh, because even it's, if, if, if yeah. I'm a guitarist. Because your hand is bigger or... Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's something yeah. like that. So something that for me was not so easy to follow, it absolutely clicks at one for you. So yeah. yeah, but it was a very, very powerful editor, I think. Very powerful. And uh, I, <laughs> just like uh, in the challenge that you mentioned, I created the base of the song in Go Tracker because uh, on a small base it was easier to follow up what happens in uh, Seed Factory 2 and I finished the tune in uh, Seed Factory 2. Yeah, it's a very flexible thing. Yes, and, and very... it is actually. Yeah, and then I can understand that you were familiar with Go Tracker, then it makes sense. In a different way, Go Tracker makes also a lot of sense, but we are going to talk about it later because yep. it was part of May, I think, the challenge of the May. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is kind of the thing that I did later during the year where I just used Seed Factory to make a, a short music and then redo it in the respective editor of the month because in a way that workflow was simpler. Sure, that if you get in the groove, then it will be very fast to work with, I'm sure. I actually did all of the Lethargy Demo soundtracks Whoa. in Seed Factory this year. And what about uh, the rest of time? Oh, rest of time. It depends on the driver, but it's actually... I don't know, because there is a built-in graph that shows you the oh, rest of consumption, but it's not a number that you can just... You, you can just read, but it, it, it's more like a graph of the actual... It, it measures the playback in a way, but I didn't really use it, and the guys, the programmers, didn't really complain that yes. it takes a lot of <laughs> rest of time. That's the measurement. If the coder doesn't complain, then it has a very good rest of time use. 
So it's a modern player and it sounds awesome. I think. Yes, and and it's it, one of the best sounding editors uh, in the challenge. Definitely, and the hard restart in it is very precise, yeah. very very precise, and and also it already has a lot of effects and and, and feature set. But in the future, I know that Laxity planned to add more, so it will be a very full fledged and and very very modern and top notch editor. Absolutely, and full respect to go to the wall developing team. Because GCH, this man is a beast. The Deep Seed is one of my favorite online Seed applications ever. I listened to Seed music through his uh, creation, Deep Seed, and he was also involved in Seed Factory 2. So, massive respect to GCH. Oh, Jens. Yes, and we need to mention also Youth. Absolutely. Because he's also working on it, and to be honest, I am not really sure who is doing what. But the three of them, they are doing a, a really great job with Seed Factory. Yeah. And, and thank you for all of that. Sure. And it's possibly one of the future big hits, if you ask me. Yes, it's going to be a tough challenge between Go Tracker and Seed Factory 2. Absolutely. Okay, let's go to, let's the, go. <laughs> to the next one, which is, if I remember right, it was the Ninja Tracker. Yes, in March, it was the Ninja Tracker 2 that we used so it's a nice little literally little tracker if it was a car it was like a very tiny go-kart because it has only the essentials but they work yes exactly that's a that's a very nice nice tracing of, of it and it was created by cadaver who created go tracker as well so this is the little brother of go tracker virtually but it has its own taste and own take on things. It's as well a one screen layout, so you can see everything on the same screen. It has a very, very low rest time and use. memory consumption. Me yes, because the player is minimalistic and it doesn't have much features, but what it has, it does it right. Yeah. So it's uh, like a virtual car with four wheels, steering wheel, seats, brakes, engine. That's it. Yeah, well, we don't need more to race. Yeah, what it does, it's doing pretty well. But uh, you shouldn't suspect some arbitrary sun design from it, because it's minimalistic, but whenever you need uh, um, very tiny music or a very economic music that gives the coder a lot of, you know, space, yeah. then it's a good choice. I did use it twice before this challenge. The interface is a bit hectic and it's not always straightforward. I think what they call commands is basically an instrument and it can be a slide or, or filter change or things like that. Yep. It, it was a bit confusing and I cannot really follow where the track is at. You know, when I press yeah. play, it's just, you know, it, it doesn't give you much visual feedback on what is going on. Yeah, there is not any sort of follow play. Yeah. Yes, but on the other hand, I made a music for a 4K intro. Oh, four, uh, yes. four kilobytes. Yes. And the music included. And the music included. <laughs> and the music was like one kilobyte out of the four or something like that. So it was very minimalistic and, and it was still a full music. And the other time when I did music with Ninja Tracker, that was for another intro, but it wasn't size limited. It was raster time limited. So that's why I needed to use it. Oh. Yeah, because of the effect on the screen was very time-consuming and CPU heavy, so the music had to be tiny. You and know, Ninja Tracker was the perfect fit for that. You know what? I did the same. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's maybe a little bit more than twice, but uh, I did music for a 4K demo as well, and it's called 078B because that was the the size <laughs> the size of the of music, music. <laughs> yes less than one kilobyte nice and uh, so it's um sort of minimalistic but working little thing it comes to use when you need something really tiny small and uh, economic yes that, that's well phrased this is the economy yeah economy class on a plane <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> Considering raster time, maybe it's Hermit's uh, one raster tracker is more economic one, right? Yeah. For the mode, because it consumes just one raster line. 
yeah for the music i do remember there are another trackers that have very little uh, raster consumption i think it's the dmc version 6 DMC and six. also it was the john player yeah that that's also using very little uh, raster time there is one thing that, that came to my mind that uh, ninja tracker can uh, use go tracker files so you can use go tracker as a centerpiece for ninja tracker tunes so it will compensate for the lack of the interface basically absolutely so virtually you just uh, transfer your music into ninja tracker okay i didn't know this one so <laughs> I did. maybe my life would have been a bit easier uh, if uh, i know uh, this i did i cheated a little because i created the music in go tracker and uh, then converted it to ninja tracker later on but uh, i did my time with ninja tracker only so it's uh, sort of uh, yeah the instruments still need fine tuning and the music data absolutely. as well yeah yeah absolutely understandable absolutely so it's a nice thing minimalistic if you have to use some minimalistic stuff then it's the way to go i think all right and that's the conclusion basically yes okay we can jump to april and it was the month of deathmon man that was quite a ride oh yeah I mean, maybe the tracker itself defines the style of the music, right? Because absolutely, because we kind of came up with uh, some kind of experimental and weird tracks, both yeah. of us. Yeah, absolutely. But it uh, was like driving a car that uh, you realize the first moment that it doesn't go left, right, and forward, backwards, but also up or down, and even forward and backward in time. So it was such a three-dimensional experience of sound design and the whole music creation of Deathmon. It's a tracker that influences your music, the way it works. Yes, and, and not just because of the layout, because of the logic of the whole thing. I think because it requires a bit of understanding what's going on under the hood yeah. in Deathmon. So I, I basically ended up with a bit of random things. I am quite sure that the modulation of the pulse width and the filter, that's quite random. I cannot tell what I did. I just used a couple of numbers that sounded good, but I have no idea how does it work. But it sounded nice, so at the end I kept it. And the whole thing is like that. Uh, yep. Whenever I just experiment with a, a new command, I think it's also called command in this editor, yep. that, that it, it can be an instrument or it can be a modifier of a parameter or whatever. Whenever I experimented with something, some completely unexpected thing happened, but it yeah. sounded awesome. <laughs> yeah, in a way, it's, uh, considering sound design, it's something like uh, you know turning the pots of uh, the synth, like uh, in uh, it's basically GMC. the modular synthesizer, yeah. where you just connect everything to everything, and then something at yeah. the end it just gives a beep. Yeah, but it's a completely unexpected things uh, happen and uh, most of the things are cool. So instead of consciously designing your instruments, you're better off with just, you know, yeah, it, it, just uh, going, to the, going with the flow. Yes, and then and, and just one thing came to my mind, it's basically the freedom of the hippies. Be because because it, 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 <laughs> this editor gives you complete freedom, you can be naked, you can just wear a couple of flowers in your hair and, and that's it and it, it is still life and it still works absolutely and uh, you as a sun designer by profession and i'm a, as a producer as by profession i think we can agree on one thing that this is one of the most flexible sun creating tools ever considering uh, pc stuff considering uh, hardware scenes considering a lot of stuff that we were created to sun design. But this thing is among the, I, I don't know, top three I've ever met. Yes, yes, definitely. I agree with that. This this was a nice surprise. I approached it like, you know, with a bit of fear. But yeah, I, me too. I, I, but but at, the, <laughs> at the end, at the end, it, this was just fun. Absolutely. It uh, was some sort of exploration. It's not only like composing, not only like uh, Commodore 64 music creation, but uh, exploration. That, wow, I didn't know that this computer can do this, yep. too. Yep. So it's absolutely very flexible, very unpredictable, very chaotic thing, 
but in the fun way, not in like we, not yes, like yes. with George Perez. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, and no freezing whatsoever. Yes, this was very stable. It it, it just didn't crash at all. No. Not even with the random numbers that I used. Nah, frantic. You are awesome, really. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Goto eighty is a beast of this editor because he uses uh, live during his uh, live acts. I saw him once. It was like uh, being on drugs without having drugs. <laughs> without using the drugs, yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. So uh, I want that, please. <laughs> so I didn't know that Commodore 64 can sound like this. And I'm an old dog, you know. I have seen and heard a lot of things. But the sounds that this guy did on stage with this thing real time, that was the reason for how I uh, had a little bit fear of this editor. Yeah, yeah, seeing that people can use it on a very pro level and we are just, you know, scratching the surface of, of this thing. And it's, yeah, again, a lot of respect to the guys who, who use the F1 on this level. And yes, I run out of words. <laughs> Yeah, so it's flexible, different experience, different from anything else I've ever tried. So, kudos. Yeah, and on this note, we can jump to the next month, which was uh, May. Yes, in May we had the Go Tracker. Yeah, the good old, I think, industry standard, maybe. Yeah, you can call it it's like a benchmark. That. Uh, and I never used it before. Uh, you're not serious. Yes, I am. Wow. That's why I had it on the list, because that was on my bucket list. That I wanted to try out uh, Go Tracker, and this was a good occasion during this challenge to, you know, give it a go. Well, I had no idea, because uh, most people I know who are creating Commodore 64 music at least tried to test it. How <laughs> did it escape you? <laughs> no idea. I think, well, uh, back in the good old times when I started to compose music I used DMC and then I had 10 years off from the Commodore 64 music and when I came back to it that was the time where I used Sid Wizard because we are friends with Hermit he showed it to me and he gave me a version and explained everything how that editor works so it was quite obvious that I'm, I'm going with that one and there was never really a good time to just try out Go Tracker and it just you know, never really had to, so I never really did. Yeah, I get it. Okay. We did the same test driving for Hermit around 2010, 11 maybe. Yeah, I wasn't part of that. That was the time when I, I didn't really touch the C64. Uh huh? Yeah, I was there at the auto parties and then the other parties, but somehow I was more into the PC scene and then just made some music for PC demos and then, yeah, that was it. I had other interests. Yeah, yeah. So that's how you skipped it for some reason. Um, that's how you skipped it, not for some reason, because yeah. the reason you explained. <laughs> I started to use it because of Jammer. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely, because... Because uh, he's an inspiration. What he can do with the Go Tracker and with the Seed, it's yeah. insane. So I skipped 15 years as well because I stopped making Commodore 64 music around two, uh, not 2019, 94. And uh, I boxed Commodore 64 and I uh, just unboxed it uh, around 2008 when I, you know, tried to dig up some old music of mine just out of curiosity. And it ended up to be a CD Remix album. And that's when I started listening to new Commodore 64 music. And I ran into Jammer's music and I was just astonished. Because this guy is a beast. <laughs> he can make the Commodore 64 speak. Without using digital samples. Without using yes. any digital samples. And the sound design that he was doing was uh, so bombastic that uh, I had to try it. I had to try his uh, tool. And I say it's a very impressive sounding uh, device. Uh, with the footnote that I would never be able to do the fracture of the sound that a jammer can do with it, because he is so much deep into it uh, that he knows all the details. I think uh, 
what uh, makes his tunes sounding so great but you can make it sound very heavy as well and uh, it is very very nice sound i think yes and what makes it not just jammer but go tracker special that go tracker is actually very flexible absolutely it's, it's very flexible and then when you just pack the music and and save it uh, it just you know makes the most compact track and and then just throws away the unused features and things like that so the music can be very minimalistic but it still sounds pretty good absolutely and it's a creator cadaver who created it uh, for his own games i think he created tools for himself that produce uh, functional music that he can use because i think some old trackers or editors had uh, the zero page problem oh, yeah, yeah. that we run yes. into I'm not a coder, but a coder so always uh, says, oh, does it have zero page or not? And I keep on telling them, I don't know, man, I'm just a musician, I don't know. But as far as I know, GoTracker produces an output file that's very friendly with either a demo code or a game or... Yeah, where, where yes. you need the resources for effects and graphics yes. and gameplay. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. So it's a very, very robust tool, a very good sounding one and it completely fits this uh, tracker workflow. If you worked with Fast Tracker, Impulse Tracker, OMP, Sid Wizard, uh, Go Tracker is almost the same. So the same logic, the same uh, visual and workflow. Mm -hmm. What actually is very good and, and was very nice to me that it, I can use the commands in the patterns and, and then the, for example, controlling the filter uh, yep. via the, 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 the patterns, that's that's very good. And uh, actually, fun fact, we had Jammer in May. He also yep. made the music with Go Tracker, of course, yeah. <laughs> for our challenge. To him, I don't think it was a challenge, but yeah. <laughs> the end result was a really nice music. So thank yeah. you, Jammer. Thank you, Jammer. And thank you for all of your help with Go Tracker. And thank you for giving me the DHC mod. The human code machine, the HCM mod. Yeah, it's some Digisound uh, yes. as well. Uh, yeah, you created a very nifty music. I actually cheated a bit because it's my music for me wasn't only Go Tracker, but it was a oh. combination of Go Tracker and Amiga <laughs> mod. So using this tool by the human code machine, it's possible to combine a two-channel seed music and a three-channel Amiga mod and combine wow. them together so you can play back the seed channels and the samples and I ended up with creating a music like that so yeah it's basically two challenge in one <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> I, I use the go tracker and the uh, THCM mod as well together so yeah it was the cover of the Mortal Kombat theme song and that was also a challenge on its own because I had to pack the samples uh, pretty tight and yeah that would be another podcast <laughs> to talk about how sure. I, I, I did the samples and, and resized them and resampled and tweaked everything. It is, it's actually interesting. We can talk about it at one point. Yeah, sure. It sounds to be hell of a project, actually. Yes, this was the most time spent on a music during that year to me. Yeah, because it's also a very hefty sound designing task as well, because you had to prepare the samples themselves. And a lot of things that uh, during Commodore 64 composing you just don't face. Yes, just... the, the, the C64 is not made for playing back samples, but it still can do it, in a way. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> and, a uh, trick. And, and that way is the trick in, in it, okay. yeah. Well, it's, it's amazing. Okay, the conclusion about Goat Tracker? It's to you? a sort of centerpiece tracker because with Goat Tracker you can use three others because either Seed Wizard, Ninja Tracker, and Seed Factory 2 can read Goat Tracker 2 files. So if you know Goat Tracker a little, then you can use three different outputs as well. Yeah, exactly. If there was a Toyota car, of trackers then go tracker would be it the things that just works fine and uh, it's predictable very stable there is one tiny thing that you should consider that uh, 
its C chip uh, emulation may be not 100% uh, like the real machine. So you have to test it on a real machine because it's a PC based uh, tracker. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, the emulation in Seed Factory is pretty good, but probably it uses a newer version of the emulation yep. than Go Tracker. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's not 100% uh, sound correct, but uh, the workflow and everything, it's a very, very top-notch thing, Yeah, I think. The conclusion to me is kind of the same, that from now on, I am not really afraid to use GoTracker because I know that it works. It just works, it's easy to use, and whenever a project requires me to work with GoTracker, yeah, now I can do it because I am not afraid to use this tool. Great. So, kudos, Calaver. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you for this awesome tracker. Okay, this was me, and in June we had the DMC version 7. And why the 7? Because that was the latest DMC. So I assumed that was the most feature packed or bug fixed or most recent version of DMC. All due to respect, I think uh, it sort of failed in the bug department. So I have used DMC4 and as far as I can remember DMC4 didn't freeze but DMC7 it did a lot for me. Okay, that's interesting because to me it didn't but probably because I grew up with uh, DMC and I used it a lot and knew the tricks. Uh, probably yeah. those tricks were with DMC7 as well. Probably. So it was not the most stable thing in the challenge for me considering you know bugs and freezing and all those sort of things, but uh, also as a big plus, I think as for an old school tracker or old school editor, I don't know what the difference between the two, but uh, a coder friend of mine, Martin Piper, who created some hybrid tracker editor, he said that a music creating tool that has a text editor, it's an editor. The thing that is more like a fast tracker or go tracker or this. Um, you know, line feed mm -hmm. uh, yeah. logic, that's a tracker. So DMC is a sort of hybrid as well, because many things, it works like a tracker, but uh, in the core, because of the commands, because of the things, it uh, is still work like an editor. I think it has a great workflow and it yes. was very easy to work with. That. Yes, definitely, because it, its interface is straightforward, even in C64 terms. Absolutely. Yeah, so, uh, and then creating some instruments, creating the filtering, and, and that's just easy, because there is no help, built-in help, but there are some helping letters <laughs> that describe pretty well what the value does uh, in the instrument editor or in the filter editor. And if you are familiar with the synthesis, you know that the F means the filter, R means the resonance, and so on and so on. That's quite explanatory. Yeah. It's also very basic in terms of features, but what it does, it does it really well. However, it's not the most modern UI and it's not the most modern uh, sound. And I think it's again an example for it was good back in the old times when you yeah. had nothing else. It, it worked awesome. It was great. But nowadays we have better tools. Yeah, absolutely agree. It can be considered to be an improved version of GMC. Yes. It, it's basically built on the same interface or the similar interface. Yeah, but much improved. So the workflow is, uh, I don't know, twice or three times better than in GMC. Sorry, Wattack. <laughs> <laughs> but it's your choice, you drive a 70s car. So, yeah, this old car analogy is quite accurate here that you said, I think. That you said. I think. <laughs> that you said. Yeah, me, I, I, did I? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, DMC7 was not the most flashy thing, but it's very respectable what it can do, I think. Especially for its time, because it was 90... Yes. Five-ish, four-ish. Earlier. 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 Yes. Mm. 92 or 93, maybe. And one more addition to this one. Yes, this is a pretty solid tracker still nowadays. Uh, and one example of users is Psycho, Psych 8580. Everyone who is not familiar with his music should listen yeah, to his music. It's great. What he does with the uh, DMC and the multi-speed music is just insane. 
But yeah, I was a very, very good sound designer, just like Jammer. And another guy came to my mind with a game addict, I think, if I'm creating games. Richard Bayliss. Mm -hmm. He's an adamant DMC user, as far as I can remember. Created hundreds of tunes with DMC. Yes, maybe he is the composer in HVST, the High Voltage Seed Collection that has the most music, yeah. I think. Yeah, and most with DMC. And most with DMC, yeah. Okay. yeah. okay, that's pretty awesome. Because DMC is not actually that raster friendly. No, it's, it's good, but it's not the best in raster con consumption. Oh, and by the way, they are both DMC and the original GMC. They were created with Brian of Graffiti. So thank you, Brian, for creating these uh, awesome tools. Back in time, it was a 90s perfect music creation tool. And did you know that that he actually created Psycho? That was a PC synthesizer when Reason and the Rebirth were a thing. He worked on Psycho, I think it was called Psycho. And it was the similar workflow, how you would work on a seed. Great. <laughs> I met one of his synths in uh, Sonar as well. I can not remember the name of the synth, but it was instantly recognizable that, uh, man, it's a Commodore 64 logic. And it sounded like that. So yeah, Ryan was a sort of very, very clever sound designer and or synth designer. As far as I know, he's making this chip tuning things for cars nowadays. Oh, what a connection. But I may be wrong. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, once I met him at Auto Party. Uh, he came back to the demo scene after 25 or so years. So, yeah, I hope that was the only time I met him. I hope we, we will meet uh, again him because uh, there's so much to thank for. I think. Exactly. And also, oh, one more story regarding him. Uh, Thomas Danko uh, is a colleague of mine Ow. and he's a good friend and he mentioned that he was in touch with Brian back in the times and he tested a lot of VST plugins and everything for him and Danko asked me if I know a contact to Brian so I dig up my contacts and they they just connected and since then I don't know if they told or did something demo scene related but I can imagine that they are working on something behind the scenes sure. together. Danko is a beast of a musician I really admire his uh, seats as well and Brian is he, one of the historic music uh, coders of Commodore 64. Yes, because we, of, this yeah. could be a very good cooperation yeah, between them. Sure. Okay. I'm looking forward to the result. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Okay, after DMC7, in July we had the Virtuoso. Um, man, I'm standing here with a bleeding heart. Explain, please. Um, some things don't work for me because I'm stupid. And this is the, the exact case. Because I'm very wrong with numbers, calculations. So I can count from 1 to 10 with 50% uh, of error. <laughs> and That's nice, I would say. And uh, virtuous, well, despite the fact that uh, I liked it, I liked how it sounded. I like uh, the workflow, I it was pretty explanatory. Still, it has some calculation bugs. When uh, I deleted one command line, then it didn't... Uh, didn't update. Didn't up. Yes. Yeah. It didn't update uh, the the jump comments. Oh, so it pointed to the wrong. Yeah, it wrong location. Pointed to the wrong location and uh, composing with virtues was like uh, making bad calculations all the way and trying to figure out what jumped where and why and it was not a good experience to me because I'm wrong with numbers. Someone who can calculate very well. Someone who is good at calculations, calculations. Uh, with ma calculations or with math? W without a calculator. Okay. Without a calculator, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was a um, calculation nightmare for me. So I didn't enjoy it uh, at all. But I'm standing here with a bleeding heart because uh, I respect Hein, who uh, created this tool. And I like his music so much. I don't wish to have bad things about it. But uh, it's well, not it for the people who cannot count. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's, uh, that's the, the short version. It sounds awesome. Uh, it has its uh, logic, but I failed with it. Yes, maybe this is a bit on the 
programmerish approach side, I think. Because to me it's also a mixed bag. It was pretty easy to use and compose music with it, but, yeah, but, uh, but I didn't understand what things do in it. Like, not even the experiment with the numbers helped to understand how the filter works in it. Like, somehow the filter didn't reset itself to the default volume when I wanted it to reset to the default volume, and it just continued to be modulated by the LFO. Uh, well, it's not exactly an LFO because you add and deduct numbers from a volume, but it's, it's basically an LFO. So I just didn't understand why it does things. On the other hand, composing music and, and just using the pattern data and the instrument data, it was pretty awesome and fluent to me. And what you felt was problematic with using those flags for the pointers and the tables and everything else, it was good to me because I could just simply modify a sound by modifying its value in the table, but not creating a new sound and a new instrument. The benefit of it is that you can do things on the fly without creating new instruments. You just modify a couple of parameters, a bit in a similar way that Defmon does, but, but with the different UI and the different logic, but kind of the same way. It uh, had a lot of features and uh, the actual music creation was uh, very good, I can agree with that, but this jumping in and out uh, parameters and pointers and bad uh, calculations it was very hard to me it's not for the week it's not for the week no no and uh, it's useful to have some coder way of thinking i think because i'm a flat out musician so i cannot program maybe <laughs> that was a problem maybe i can agree because we who are musicians only we don't usually understand the programmer way of thinking and many if not majority of these editors are basically just hex editors where you just dump the number into the seed registers and to a musician it's kind of works but if i don't understand what i'm doing then how am i supposed to create a music that i want because in most of the times with these experimental editors it was just a trial and error basically yep so it wasn't like i want to create this sound so i know how to create it no it was trial and error so as a conclusion i will probably not using virtues again because i'm just stupid i cannot uh, calculate well so it was very hard to follow yes yes and no yeah probably i'm not going to use it either it was nice to create a music with it but it's not <laughs> sorry hein this is not my favorite one okay so with this conclusion let's jump to august and yeah. that was exceed by jeff a nice month this was a surprise to me absolutely because this this editor supposed to be just a beta version or, or unfinished and it is yeah but, but let's uh, talk a little about its history because it has uh, one of the saddest in Commodore 64 yeah we know that jeff had worked on a lot of players and editors back in the good old times and he wanted to create a new one and that was exceed he developed it until a point where it was very useful and very good and someone stole the source code and the editor from him and started to spread it and jeff was upset and for an obvious reason absolutely and he just abandoned the project and guys do not steal source code because this is not good for the poor musicians and it's not really good for jeff as well because this editor could be just the standard because it already has a lot of features a lot of effects a lot of really nice workflow things the view meters or or you know that shows what's going on in the track is just awesome hermit admitted that he kind of get the idea for seed wizard yep. by using the same uh, meters in seed wizard that jeff used in Exceed. so this is a very sad story and very sad that Exit is just unfinished because it has a great potential. Absolutely. But the lack of features, like a very basic one, it doesn't have follow play. So when you press play, you just don't know where the track is. It just goes and plays the notes that you entered already, but I could not follow where I am. So it was a bit of a pain to complete the track in it. Yes, it's an unfinished Formula One car. 
and I'm finished for a very sad reason. Otherwise, the things that work in Exceed were so great. Certain workflow is so well implemented that if you ever used Go Tracker, Fast Tracker, Impulse Tracker, Seed Wizard, you know, this uh, standard design uh, tracker workflow, you will be able to create music with the Exit. Everything is, you know... It, Everything is at hand and, yeah, and yeah. makes sense and very logical. And it sounds great, I think. Maybe there's a question that how do the, these trackers sound different because they have the same chip and the chip has some very simple registers to create music and just a couple of sounds. But the way as musicians uh, try to solve problems, the best of possible sound, they use different solutions for that. I realized that when we talked to Hermit a little time ago, I think a month ago maybe, and he explained how to start. Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember of that. He explained it in a very understandable way. Yeah. Uh, and we as musicians, <laughs> we understood it, it. Yeah, absolutely. And even for me and mathematical anti-talent, it was understandable. And I realized that everyone who tried to code music on Commodore 64 used different methods to handle the synth chip, to fix problems, to enhance uh, certain attributes. And that's why all of these trackers sound different because they handle the sound creation a different way. So, back to Exit. It was a very, very fluent, very good sounding, uh, but unfinished car. And it's very painful to see such a great tool to it's be... It's just going to waste. Jeff is not going to finish it, but it's a shame because this would, this would have been a great tool. Press F to show respect. <laughs> okay, September. Well, September was an interesting month. For at, sure. At least to me, it was the cheese cutter month. Cheese cutter. I like cheese. Yeah, well, me too. <laughs> okay, to me, this editor was very familiar because this is the GCH way of pattern stacking and sound creation and music creation tool. And it's very, very similar to Seed Factory. And, and I got to use to Seed Factory uh, during the year very much. And switching to Cheese Factory was very easy. However, there are differences between Seed Factory and Cheese Cutter so tiny that they are annoying. <laughs> so Cheese Cutter was really good. I ended up with creating a cover of Tarzan Boy mm. <laughs> this year. Uh, by oh, the way, uh, oh, 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 I actually got a, a YouTube copyright to that <laughs> because, the, because the algorithm uh, uh, yeah, noticed that this is the Tarzan Boy. Did YouTube? Yes, they flagged Put it. you on a copyright strike? Because yes, for a cheap tune cover of, of Tarzan Boy. Okay, yeah, probably <laughs> it's, it's just too similar to the original melody, but uh, obviously this is a cover. Uh, this is Witch Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I contacted them and they removed oh, it. Oh, uh, okay, okay. It, it's fine. It was just surprising that, no, this never happened, but I did covers oh. before. Yeah, so cheese cutter right. is just a tiny bit different to Seed Factory, but this difference is well enough to be a bit annoying if you are used to Seed Factory. If you are used to Cheese Factory, ah, uh, Cheese Factory. <laughs> if you are used uh -huh. to Cheese Cutter, then Seed Factory would be annoying to you. Yeah, uh, it's just uh, up to your point of reference, I guess. For me, it was the same way, a little bit uh, unfamiliar as Seed Factory too, because I'm. I rather like a traditional tracker workflow and not too much into this block uh, stacking method. It was not so easy for me to follow that where I am in the tune and things like that, but it was a very positive surprise because the sound on the other hand was awesome. It sounded yeah. very good. Exactly. The feature set, the parametering and, and then creating the effects and everything else is just very good, it's spot on, it eats a lot of raster time, but the sound itself and the overall workflow is pretty good, pretty good. Despite the fact that it's very not my thing, I can understand everything because everything made sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was created by Abaddon, right? Uh, yes, Abaddon, yeah. Great work, and uh, you have a pretty nice alternative to go tracker Seed Factory 2. Uh, just in case, if you don't have a Commodore 64 computer, but still you wish to create Commodore 64 music. Yeah, Cheese Cutter, Seed Factory, Go Tracker, these are 
pretty nice tools for doing some music on the PC or Mac. And one more example who uses cheese cutter is Alman. Oh. And it shows the potential of cheese cutter. Absolutely. And Alman's, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. I think he created some uh, LP, right? A vinyl. A year ago, maybe two. Yes, that's the combination of the TH. Sorry, I cannot pronounce it. You know that the sample player tool. Yeah. And and the combination of cheese cutter and that sample player tool. Yeah, and it sounds amazing. I just uh, didn't realize that it's a Commodore 64, so it's a very, very capable tool. And Elman is one of the top sound designers of Commodore 64, I think, uh, up to the League of Jammer. These guys are my two favorites, maybe. Yeah, on the modern era of the Commodore yeah. 64 music, he is definitely one of the most prominent composers and producers, because it's not just composing, but producing the music well. A lot of sound design. And not to mention that he's a great guy. Yeah, of course. He is the head or owner of a Remix 64 site. Let's roll uh, another thing, the Commodore 64 Remix scene. Yes, we can talk about remixes as well, because we did a lot of C64 music remixes. Yeah, in the because, past. absolutely, because, um, you know, playing Commodore 64 music with uh, musical instruments is fun. Yes, and <laughs> the C3P Alliance, remember? Uh, Little times playing. Uh, maybe I have heard about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, on stage. Yeah. Never, never, never heard about it. No? Uh, maybe, maybe. Maybe just a bit. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what is that guitar in the corner? Oh, is that your guitar? I don't know, I'm just a musician, I cannot play instruments. <laughs> you just press a button on the computer. Yeah, and that's why I'm touring with different bands since 1992. Oh. Shit, you are old. I'm, I'm, f I'm more than old, I'm twice as old. So, yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Um, there is one story that maybe we will cut it out because it might not be relevant. So, there is a story with Alman and me. Actually, we never met before X 2018, I think. And I was attending to the party and I arrived with a, an unfinished track. And I started to work on it, but I didn't have much confidence to release it because I thought it's shit and, you know, it's just a bit of rushed. Yeah. And I had a talk with Alman. It's, it was kind of an accident because people just introduced us to each other and we never really spoke before. And I just, I don't know why, but I mentioned to him that I have a half finished track and I don't know if I want to finish it and release it at X because I don't think it would be good. He just told me that, don't care about it. Finish it, release it. Because it doesn't <laughs> matter what others think about it. It matters that you compete with something that you you made. Because that's your work and that's you. Yeah, he's right. And, and, and he was <laughs> completely right. And I was just, thank you. That's what I needed. So I went back to my 364, finished the track. I don't know what place I reached with that. I don't think it was my best music ever. But it was really awesome to have someone as a support, someone like him. And and, and thank you, Alman, that was really great. And I, I still remember of this moment. Yeah, he's a very, very creative guy because uh, he's also a master... Uh, Mastering engineer, no, I think. a master painter. Master painter. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I remember him putting up some pictures on Facebook and they are pretty nice. So stunning. A stunningly talented guy, multi-talented, just like our friend Hermit. But that's another story, another month. So, Cheese Cutter, let's uh, have some conclusion. It's very, very useful and effective, great sending tool. And it's a great alternative to GoTracker or Seed Factory 2. Exactly. However, for uh, demo scene productions and demo music production might not be the most effective because it uses a lot of raster time. Uh, maybe not a lot, lot, but more than Go Tracker and yep. Seed Factory. So if you are short on raster time and CPU time, Cheese Cutter might not be your tool. Okay. Yeah. So we can jump to the next one, and that's October, which officially should have been Schorschberetz. But we yeah. messed up the order and we made a music beat, SDI, Sid does it. <laughs> uh, Sid does it by a shape, I guess. Yes. yes. And two awesome musicians, I think, uh, 
absolutely the, the top top league guys uh, created it as far as I know GRG and Gerd Kjelta sorry but if I butchered the name I don't know any Norwegian but uh, Gear, that that's uh, Gear. 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 try it buddy because maybe you can I know I don't I can't I'm just improvising here Gear. Gear Kjelta maybe so uh, <laughs> okay so Glenn and here guys we absolutely respect you so what I could see with uh, Sid does it that it was an immense amount of work went into it and, and it's a very powerful editor uh, really when it comes to composing music and finding things that are logical and you know it's so obvious yes to it, create it, music it, with it it, it shows a, that the musicians did it yeah so it was such a great tool to create music with it. It was alongside with Defmon. It was the second best surprise to me. The third best was uh, Exit. It's much, much better than I thought. And I thought that it will be good. Yeah, I agree with that. And one more addition from my side is that the usage of the fourth channel as, as the filter channel is just an awesome idea because you don't have to worry about uh, creating new instruments to have different filters and you don't have to worry about uh, using pattern commands and you know reaching the limit of the pattern commands because you yep. have a separated channel for the filter which i actually didn't use in my track but but it's a pretty awesome feature and i've never seen this before in any other tool and awesome idea and a lot of you know this uh, shortcuts where are they placed so it's Pretty logical. One of the best uh, composing experience on Commodore 64 for me in the yeah. challenge. Yeah, not to me, because I've seen better. However, what you said, I agree with, with that. It's just, you know, on a composing side and on the editor side, it was awesome. It was straightforward and easy to get used to it. And what you wish to continue with, because I'm, <laughs> I know what you, you said again, um, just like in the case with uh, Heinz, uh, otherwise awesome virtuoso, I'm standing here with a bleeding heart as well. Probably I will not have much use for Sid Does It, despite the fact that as for a composing tool, it's awesome because I cannot code, I cannot program. Yes, and you have to if you want to compile your music because it's just a separated player and a separated music data that you get at the end when saving your work. And you have to compile it manually using an assembler, which is a terrible pain for a musician. And when you gave me your work files, I had already a bit of experience with my work files that is going to be a pain to compile it. It's just, you have to load them separately. There are steps that you have to do. And, and me, who is not a programmer i had very very hard time to make music uh, usable out of this music data and player and i failed a couple of times i was i'm not saying i was almost crying but i was upset that i could not do it without help so i was shouting at uh, visage poor guy he helped me a lot <laughs> <laughs> with all of these coding things throughout the year and at the end, I sold it on my own and I used Visage as my uh, rubber ducky, you know, <laughs> the, the rubber duck bug fixing. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a pain. And there are rules that you have to follow with SDI compiling the track. And it wasn't working, it was working. And also, oh my God, yes, we found a, a bug in your track. Remember? The, yes. fi the filter didn't sound properly. And we just couldn't figure it out what we did wrong with the compiling process. And I found it out that the filter values in the editor work differently than in the exported music data and the compiler tool. So I had to change uh, a couple of values in uh, in the editor in your track and then mm. compile it again and it worked. But this is not documented at all. This was kind of, I think, a, a random thing because what sounded good in the editor, you thought it, it, it's, it's fine, but it wasn't. And, and we didn't know that. So it, it gave us a lot of pain. You have such a great music tool and uh... For stupid people like me, who cannot uh, program at all with better math, it just has no practical use because uh, I tried to use uh, this assembly compiling 
and I absolutely miserably failed. Absolutely miserably. So, uh, yes, I, it, it, I love this, this uh, tracker. I love to work with it. But um, what is the use for me if I cannot compare my, my own music because I'm stupid uh, again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, you have to have a programmer to help out. And yeah. and sometimes it might not be possible or you don't have somebody at hand and, and you know, within reach you know, to I'm, help you. So, yeah. I don't like to admit that I'm stupid. So, <laughs> and not uh, publicly, so... Uh, <laughs> okay, let, let, yeah, we, we're gonna cut it out. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so... Yeah, it's a great tool for guys who can uh, understand how to code Condor 64 and as well as musicians. Uh, by the way, uh, considering feature set, did you know that Sid Does It has a uh, same way usable MIDI capability than Sid Wizard? No, but this would have been a nice information because I would have used my MIDI keyboard and... I realized just way after finishing the music. <laughs> okay. Uh, and maybe not all the versions support that, I don't know about it, but that's for sure that it can use a MIDI keyboard. And it's a great feature. So you have something that is really good to drive, really has all the features, and great that you just fail to pass the driving license on my side. <laughs> or on my side. So uh, considering uh, creating music, it was one of my favorites, the okay. challenge. I this time I don't agree fully because this wasn't my favorite but probably the music compiling part uh yeah just just you know and that's uh, pulls it down yeah well, that's hard hard for me too so anyway anyway it was a nice experience and a good good experience okay so that the editor that's supposed to be in October it ended up in November and it was the Shosh Peretz this has Hungarian roots, a Hungarian coder did it, and a lot of Hungarian musicians used it. I am not sure about the international scene, if anyone else used it. But it doesn't really matter, because on my side, I am not going to touch this one ever. No. This was the worst and worst and worst experience ever. Yeah, but uh, let's go into the details what was your problem with it then i will tell my problems with it crash freeze unclear things that i just don't understand how they work why they work in that way or why don't they work because in other editors they work so, so it, it was just a mess and a confusion and all the bad terms that i cannot come up with here right now it's just all i have about short pellets is that no never no, never. And, and this repeats in my head. So it was a terrible experience to you, for sure. For me, it's a little bit uh, less terrible, but still not not good at all. It felt like a really old car with issues. Maybe flat tires, maybe, you know, transmission doesn't work properly. Clutch doesn't work properly. Yeah, but the previous owner know, uh, knew how to use the car, but forgot about the maintenance. Uh, maybe something like that and I'm not sure that our version was a bug fixed one because uh, it was just uh, I tried to set sounds and it freeze I tried to save it freeze yeah I, I basically saved after each step I did in this editor to make sure that I don't lose my work so it was a pain yeah a and I, I ended up with yeah I, I didn't use the uh, vice feature that you know, it just saves into the directory, but I created like 12 disks. 12 disks? Oh. <laughs> yes, yeah. and I have the work file saved into 12 disks at I the end. can't recall, I did a very simple piece of music with that after, you know, failing with all, all this uh, saving and stuff. And I think I had 40 saves. Yeah, yeah, something like that, uh, yeah. Which five minutes. So yeah, bugs. That's uh, that's terrible, absolutely terrible. But then there were some positive things because first thing, the layout was great. It's, fami it's familiar because it's the usual DMC way of visuals and and instrument creation, and it just makes sense. Absolutely. However, the the filter here was not explained at all and and not straightforward again. Why is it always the filter? I don't know. Um, maybe it's uh, the part that uh, people, I mean music coders, uh, try to handle the most different way. 
because uh, when it comes to filters, I haven't seen as uh, unpredictable one like uh, DMCs. Yeah, that's true actually. Or or such an abstract thing that Frantic did with Deathmon. Or, for instance, such a predictable and absolute logical one that uh, she does it has. Yeah. Yep. So, I think filter is the other thing. So back to Shosh Parrot, it wasn't as terrible to me, but surely I will not compare music with it because we have much better tools. Yes, definitely. And I cannot say enough times that respect to everyone who ever worked with Shosh Parrot and made great tracks, because there are great tracks made with this editor. Yeah. And I just don't understand how and why. <laughs> I understand the why, but how? Maybe they had a somewhat more stable version, I guess. Because I just cannot imagine that with so much freezing, uh, guys uh, would be very productive. But they were around the time. Yes. They created yes. an ample yeah. of tons of music with this editor, and maybe the CSDB one is a buggy one. I hope this was the case, and we are not just stupid. Uh, I admit I am. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to, <laughs> but probably I have to admit as well. <laughs> So, uh, one more thing, because in DeepSeed you can search for editors, like you would search for a composer or yep. for a track name, you can search for editors, like if you type into the search field at Shosh Palette, it will give you the tracks that's been made with that editor, same with GoTracker, Seed Wizard, yep. whatever, whatever, and this is a really good feature for checking out what others did with this editor, and I checked it out, and I was surprised that how did they do it? How? And I wasn't able to repeat it after them. There is one tiny detail that we had no documentation at all for this one. Yeah, but we experimented with the numbers with other editors as well. Yeah, that's But they true. just didn't crash as many times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so these things were not so fluent in this editor and I will not touch it again. Yeah. Definitely, because we have better tools. But um, I'm not as annoyed with it as you, but I can understand because we just you know, chatted a lot during uh, Shosh Peretz uh, round and yeah, we were sort of, you know, in the mindset that how the hell would we pass this round? Yes, I think we actually ended up with extra days like it crashed so many times, I got so frustrated that I just left this editor for days uh, yeah. without touching it. And then I came back to it and at the end we kind of run out of the month. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, a couple of extra days were needed in this case. So this version at least was a lemon <laughs> in this challenge. Yeah, it's nice, tiny and yellow, but it's sour as fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. This is what you meant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's about Maybe it. not. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah. This is the Hungarian orange. Right? Yeah. yeah. Tiny, yellow, yeah. sour, but it's ours. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. And now it's December. And December, it was Sid Wizard's month. Sid Wizard, yeah. We are familiar with it. Absolutely. You and me made tons of tracks with it already. We knew it. The reason for putting it at the end of the year, my initial idea was that, yeah, I am good with Sid Wizard, at least at the end of the year. I don't want to, you know, be frustrated with different editors. So I wanted an easy one yep. to, to just close the year. And Sid Wizard seemed to be the perfect one for it. Yeah, and in the hope that uh, some other guys join us and maybe... And yes, they did. But I mean, uh, who use, uh, I don't know, GoTracker uh, and others, and maybe they they can try this oh, one yeah, too. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a great idea behind it, I think. And I really appreciate it because December was uh, otherwise... Uh, it was like hell, hellish occupied months. I'm not in VU because I know the stories and it's just crazy that you can squeeze all of that thing into 24 hours a day. So Seed Wizard basically is well known and, and familiar and popular in the demo scene world. And it wasn't a surprise 
that we had an extra composer this year, Spider Jerusalem. Yeah. Thank, thank you for your music. Uh, it was also actually out of the three of this one. I would say yours is the best. It's a great composition, a lengthy one, very complex one, and yeah, max respect. Yes. Thank you, Spider. You are a beast. I like your music quite much. And sorry, on this note, uh, we actually forgot to mention Dablondi, who gave us a music in February with Seed Factory. I'm sorry, I'm terribly sorry for forgetting you. So, there were three other guys joined us in three rounds. And it's a great thing, because, you know, it's not only a major duel <laughs> on this month. <laughs> yeah, well, February was still a major, not duel, but how would you say when three... Trial. This, trial? Trial. <laughs> trial. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, triumvirat. So, back to Seed Wizard. It is such a fully featured and unfairly workflow booster tracker that by these two categories it feels like almost unfair to compare it to others. Because not another tracker can do that if you want. You just record your music with a synth in a modern digital audio workstation, just like uh, Cubase, Reaper, Pro Tools, whatever you like, and create a 3-channel MIDI and export the MIDI. Import it into Seed Wizard and bang, you are there. You just have to set the sound and it's extremely quick for me because I'm an instrumentalist. So if you play the parts, you can uh, record it in MIDI just in, I don't know, minutes and it's unbeatable. I think. So despite the fact that uh, sometimes I fight a lot with hard restart with this one, because uh, that part is not as solid for me as it was in Seed Factory 2 or Go Tracker or Seed Does It, for instance, because uh, there I can have a more precise start of each sound for some reason, I don't know. So sound wise, maybe I prefer Go Tracker or Seed Factory, but this workflow thing that uh, in I don't know, one hour, or in this case, in 20 minutes, I can be ready. I think nothing can beat it for me. That's nicely put, because it's all true, and nothing beats Seed Wizard's workflow. If things were straightforward to me in Seed Factory, or even in Cheese Cutter or Exceed, in Seed Wizard, everything is just tailored for the musician. It has the best UI, the best visualization of the music, and I don't think anything can be as it. So it's it clearly shows that Hermit put a lot of effort into the workflow and into the tool. And to a musician, this is just a blessing. Absolutely. And one thing that uh, is uh, very close to a musician's mindset is simplifying. So not other trackers try to simplify things and explain things so effectively as Sid Wizard. So simple and straightforward with Seed Wizard. You can see everything on one screen. If you uh, want to create a simple instrument, you can do it yeah. just like effortlessly. It's interesting you mentioned this MIDI workflow because to be honest, I never used it. Uh, wow. <laughs> because I don't have to, because it's it's simple to do everything inside Seed Wizard to me. I, I don't need to play things on a keyboard because I can just simply enter the notes into the patterns and it is the same simple and easy workflow to me. And did you know that Seed Wizard can import the FastTracker XM files as well? Yeah, FastTracker yeah. XM and... Uh, Maybe the mods, the God, Omega mods as well. I think it can import mods, uh, it can import MIDI, it can import uh, GoTracker 2 files if you are familiar with GoTracker. I created a couple of uh, music that first started in GoTracker and then I finished it in uh, Seed Wizard. So, yeah, you even have a comparison video of uh, how does it sound in yeah, yeah. GoTracker and in Seed Wizard. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and it's a remarkable tool, absolutely. And uh, it was not a surprise that it remained my favorite because I didn't suspect anything beat it for me because of this workflow because I'm an instrumentalist, because I can record my instrument in a modern studio software and import MIDI into Seed Wizard, I think nothing can beat it. But uh, I was positively surprised of other trackers, just like Death Moon, that was an um, absolute surprise how great it was. Seed Factory, absolutely great how it sounds, or Seed does it. 
how great it was uh, creating music with it or Exit. So there were great surprising good things, but I don't think I will switch from Steve Dizard. Yes, them. basically this is the conclusion on my side as well, that in a modern world that we are living in, we have so many great tools to work with, and now I'm talking on the PC world and the Mac, yeah. that we have the studio software, the MIDI keyboards, all of the tools that help us to create music and just don't think about what's under the hood. And with the Commodore 64, this is not the case. It's never really the case. You have to know about the chip. You have to know about the way of the chip is working, the C chip. And uh, the tools that we have on it, it just sometimes helps, sometimes doesn't. Sometimes the tools assume that you are a programmer and you know how programming uh, a chip would work and they don't give you anything else. Here, you have a way to enter the numbers directly into the registers of the seed, and that's it, make your music. Yep. And I don't think nowadays we are used to it or we are happy to work with this workflow. That's why to me Seed Factory is pretty awesome and Seed Wizard is even better uh, in workflow ways because it just helps the musician to create and focus on the music and don't think about what's under the hood. Yeah, that's a great conclusion, I think. Either as of this tracker, Seed Wizard, and of the whole challenge. So from the musician's point of view, that's where our journey. Yes, I think we grew as programmers as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but ju just but, you, just you. I, oh, I yeah. don't, <laughs> I don't, I cannot code at all. So I'm, I'm stupid, I admit it. Sorry, Hein, I cannot calculate <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just let's face it we are old as fuck and we are not really want sure. to learn new <laughs> things and this challenge showed to me that i'm not going to do it again because it's just a lot of pain and a lot of hassle and even if there are a lot of great tools out there i will stuck with one and not do music with other ones only occasionally only if a project requires it it's purely because of comfort. Yeah, that's uh, the biggest uh, truth in the whole thing, that we are old as fuck. And, you know, you like comfortable things, and there's nothing more comfortable as you burn in wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you don't even have to change the tires on it, because the old tires still work. Oh, still. But anyway, I think... I will adventure in Defmon sometime in the future. I'm sure that in some projects I will keep on using Go Tracker and Ninja Tracker, you know, when and there's a tiny thing is needed. Yeah, yeah. And Exit was very tempting. Yes, I must say, yes. Yes, Exit. Oh my god. Uh, what a shame. But uh, I think it, it runs as a background application in my head that uh, I should dig it up sometime also uh, Sid does it absolute did it for me absolutely but I will ask uh, the help of a coder to export the music because I'm I'm stupid to program don't, don't, don't look at me I'm not going to do it again <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> sorry sorry but no <laughs> okay okay I know it maybe I ask uh, gear with a uh, lot of respect no some guy by the way it's a very very straightforward sort of person and the world would be a better place with more people like him, <laughs> I think. So, that was the month by month. Yeah, analysis. in details, analysis. It is. Yeah. So let's see the scores. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. And the rating. Yeah. So, who reveals first? Okay. So I think it makes sense to just say out loudly the order what I came up with. And then we will show a screen of the scores in detail uh, on the screen, right? Okay, so let's uh, start with uh, 12. The last one, what, what is yours? The last one is definitely, I don't think it's a surprise, it's Shosh Peretz. Uh, for me too, so it, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's a Shosh Peretz for you it's as Shosh well. Peretz. Yes, because of the freezing, I, it was not very high on the ease of use no. part. So I give the lowest score it, but it had some very nice things as well. So I gave it to 15 overall. Yeah, to me it's 17 points overall. 
you are a much nicer person than me. Probably I am. <laughs> Surely you are. <laughs> okay, so let's see. The next one to me is Ninja Tracker. Ninja Tracker? Oh, it's DMC for me. Uh, the explanation for this one is the Ninja Tracker is a great one. It's solid one. It's just lack of features. It's, it's a sacrifice on the tiny and compact player and feature set. And I could not give a lot of points to the features because it doesn't have any. Um, yes, but uh, I wouldn't agree because uh, what it has, it works. So Yes, but it um, lacks the features. Yeah, okay, so for me, uh, number 11 is, is DMC because of the freezings. It was a nice uh, experience, except for freezing. I cannot use something with a full smile if it it's not stable enough. And DMC7 was not. If it was DMC4, I would rate it much higher. Okay, the next one to me is the SDI. See, it does it. SDI? Yes. You must be fucking joking. No. It's such a good instrument and it was so nice to make music with yes, it. Yes, but the compiling the music and, 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 and the workflow, it's a no I... for a musician. It's sorry, I had to. Oh man, I'm standing here with a bleeding heart. I know, I know. <laughs> That's the same to me with the Ninja Tracker because yeah. it ended up low on my list, but it's a pretty useful tracker. It's just, you know, the feature set and the points on it. Yeah, and the uh, assembly coding. Okay, I get your point uh, with, with um, bleeding card. So let's see mine. It's GMC V2 and a point of 21. I love this tracker, but uh, considering features and all the other things uh, that uh, other trackers provide, I think it would be just unfair to rate it too high yep. compared to others that can do a lot of more things. Yes, agreed. Uh, it sounded awesome, so it, it got a very uh, high score for sound. It's nine. Actually, I gave eight points to GMC. And actually, this is the fourth one on my list. The next one. Oh. Yeah, basically the, for the same reasons as you just said. So we almost rated it the same way. So I have a Ninja Tracker here. It's number... I the fourth one, yeah. Uh, let's... From back Yeah, we are very bad at math. <laughs> Which one is from? <laughs> I'm even worse. <laughs> 12 minus 4 is the 8. 8. Oh. So it's Ninja Tracker for me. The same reasons as uh, you said. It ended up having 22 points. But I love this thing. Because it's go kart -ness. But again, others uh, have much more features. Yeah, and, and the workflow of things and the UI is yeah. much nicer. But you can import things from the Google Tracker, that's a whole different story. Yes, if I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one to me is DMC7. DMC7, you rated it quite high, but it didn't freeze for you. Yes, I didn't experience freezing and it was still a solid experience. It was like my childhood, you know, <laughs> it's coming back mm -hmm. because I got used to it 20 years ago, 25 or whatever. It's just... It's still the same DMC experience. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, this, this uh, tracker. My list comes uh, number seven is Virtuous 1.02. Despite the fact that I loved it as a music creation tool, this pointer thing that absolutely confused me. Do you remember the cat from Monty Python's Flying Circus? The confused cat part. Y yes. I was like that. So it was the pointers and the things, uh, such an experience for me. But otherwise, the music creation itself was awesome in this one. And that also great sending thing. Just not my thing. Cannot calculate at all. Okay, next one. Number six. It's Defmon for me. Defmon? Yes, it ended up a bit low on my list. Just because I'm still confused by all of these commands and, and what they do. With a bit more time, with a bit more experimenting, I think I would like to use it more. It's just, there are better things to my personal taste. Mm. But still, Frantic, you are awesome. This Defmon is just awesome and it's unexpectedly great. Absolutely. It's, uh, it was the surprise of the challenge for me. I yeah. will definitely return to it sometime. So, it's cheese cutter for me. 
because the workflow, the, everything is right with this tracker, but I'm not too familiar with this workflow. So I worked uh, slower than, uh, than uh, usual with this one. But I like the sound, I like the layout, everything was logical, so everything is okay, but I just worked better with others. Okay. I give you 27 points for that. Okay, the next one to me is Virtuoso. It's kind of on the higher stand here because I kind of liked it. There are confusing things in it, but overall it's a solid experience. I can agree, but no pointers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need the pointerless version. <laughs> yeah, I can see the use of it. It's just, yeah, it might not be your cup of tea. But maybe people can, you know, put their attention on much more things than I can just you know, look at one thing at the same time. I cannot have this parallel processing thing at all. Yeah, I agree. It can be very complex. It's a very nice feature set, I would say, that you have the option to modify everything on the fly. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. Okay. My next one is SDI, 29 points. I loved this tracker, but uh, this assembly compiling is just plainly scary for me. Yes. Yes, that's why it ended up on <laughs> very low on my list. So uh, I'm standing here with a um, bleeding heart. Yeah. I have two exit wounds, not just one, two, because otherwise I love it. Yes, you already bled to death. I know, I can see that. <sighs> and, and, and kind of feel the same. It's just, to me, this workflow thing in SDI just doesn't cut it. And, and unfortunately, this is a big deal to me. Uh, for me too, because, you know, I cannot code and uh, I'm very bad at anything programming. So, because yeah, yeah. otherwise, I love this. Otherwise, it was one of the best trackers. Yeah, it, it's very hard to say bad things about an otherwise really good thing. It, it just, yeah, but we have to make a list, so. It was not good because yeah. I'm stupid. <laughs> that is the <laughs> explanation. Okay, let's see your next. Okay, on my list, it's Exit. Exit. It's, it's great. It's great. It's unfinished, unfortunately. It's a sad story. And uh, somehow I want to support Jeff. And that's why I want to give it a, a higher score. Because overall, it's great. It's unfinished. It's great. But it's unfinished. But it's still fucking great. Yeah. It deserves uh, appreciation, I think. Yes. I, I totally agree on that part. So for me, it's a surprising death mom. Despite the fact that uh, this was one of the surprise editors trackers in this challenge and I will definitely use it uh, sometime, the practical use of others were a little bit uh, better for me. So if I'm just in the mood of creating some weird experimental music, I will definitely use it. But the majority of uh, my Commodore 64 composing is not uh, like that. It's uh, like uh, someone asks uh, music for uh, production, he wants uh, small rest of time, I have just a very limited time to finish the job, so I have to use uh, an external studio software with MIDI and so and so on. So it's uh, it will be my holiday tracker. <laughs> that's nice, nice to put. And one of my favorites, but that's the reason why it is not on the top of my list. Okay, very understandable. So, okay, to me the next one, Seed Factory 2. It's not the top one. Uh, oh. But it is your favorite tracker. Yes, it is my favorite tracker, but if I have to give points to the various uh, feature sets and things like that, it's not on the top list because it still lacks features, which will come in the future. I get it. If it was C64 GT Challenge 2022, maybe it would be top on the list for you. I would say yes. Ah. Yes, because by that time, most likely this seed factory would have the features that is planned. It's just, you know, Black City might or might not have the time to do it in the very near future. But overall, it's still a very useful tool and, 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 and then I love it. I cannot say it enough times that I completely switched from Seed Wizard to Seed Factory because of the workflow, because of the current feature set, because of everything is just what I like. But it's still not the top one because it still lacks a couple of features so uh, it's pretty solid explanation i think i would say I, I don't agree in a way it's a little bit similar to exit but exit is game over yes and exactly. it has a future 
uh, I completely agree that maybe in the future it will be the benchmark editor. Yes, if and it... I hope so, and I, I hope it will, because the future set and the, and the workflow and everything is just very comparable to Go Tracker now and to Cheese Cutter, but it's not there. Yet. Okay, it's fine. So let's see. I have Exit sitting so high here because it's so nice, and I want to give the same credit to, to Jeff, uh, like you did. Um, it was so logical and so fluent. I'm so sad that it wasn't finished. But considering the workflow, because I usually have a very, very limited time to create music, and it actually has a lot of uh, workflow boosters. You know, the layout, the things that are logical, are easy to find things. It was very good. It's a very, very well uh, built system. Agreed. Agreed. So, it's a 31 points for me i forgot to say the point we will show it on the screen right yeah good <laughs> okay <laughs> okay next one and is the third Th one it's top three top three okay so it's cheese cutter for me cheese cutter a very strong point yeah it's an awesome editor it's an awesome tool it's fully fledged has everything and it's very similar to seed factory so that's why it ended up in front of Seed Factory. And, you know, probably this layout and this workflow is that fits me well. That's why I gave the most points to these editors. My as well, it's a great tool. So... Yeah, and, and I was very surprised how easy it was to find my way in it, to create some sounds, some good and useful sounds. Everything is there. It's a solid, a very solid tool. Mm, absolutely agreed. So let's see. Uh -huh. My third is Seed Factory 2. Because uh, despite the fact that it's unfinished, I found it a very, very effective production tool. Very effective. And also, I loved its uh, sound capabilities. Because you have the scalable drivers. Like uh, something else I will I mention later. But, you know, this Rough Hubbard sound creation way was awesome. And also, they had different music drivers. Yep, yep. Um, different features at different sounds, different size of the player, which can be very handy for tiny productions. Absolutely yeah. great, absolutely great uh, idea and very useful. So uh, this feature alone would lift this uh, tracker quite high on my list alone. So it's a superb tool, I think. One of the other uh, positive surprises. So Good to hear that, actually. I'm, I'm very oh. happy that you like Seed Factory because I feel like I'm the ambassador of Seed Factory. I, I, on every forum, on every channel, I just praise it because I like it so much. So, Silver. second place, it's Go Tracker for me. Go Tracker, the second. Yes, I, it, I don't think it needs explanation. It's just the go-to tool if you are a musician. It has everything. It has all the tools for a musician. It's straightforward. It's just one tiny thing that I cannot live with. It's just a bit different to the seed factory way of music composition and and that's what makes it the second place yes it's pears and apples you know uh, it's up to your reference really so i don't know if there is a fair comparison between uh, these workflow things because both of them work yeah so, definitely it's just what you prefer yeah absolutely absolutely so yeah it's a quite a respectable position and uh, i think the Go Tracker is around for 15 years, maybe, maybe a little more. No idea. So, at least a decade. Yeah. I guess. Uh, early 2000 years or mid 2000 yeah, years? Something like that. It is a stunning history. And lifetime. Absolutely. Yeah, and it still shows the potential because great composers like Jammer, Shogun, and the rest of the guys, they just do great things with Go Tracker. So, uh, silver for me is Go Tracker 2 as well. Oh, what a surprise. There's one thing because it became the second, because otherwise, if you wish to be the most flexible, I think Go Tracker 2 is the way to go, despite the fact that I rated it the second only, because it's a very nice centerpiece. You can export your music to Ninja Tracker if you wish to have a very tiny output. You can load your music into Seed Factory 2, Seed Wizard. So it's one tracker, but uh, you can use four if you wish to. This is the Swiss Army knife. Absolutely. And uh, if there is uh, such a category, it's an industry standard or, or Toyota. 
of uh, trackers. So, let's see the <laughs> golden award of... <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not a surprise on both sides, I, I guess. Think. Yeah, it's it Wizard. It's just simply the best one out there in terms of workflow and and ease of use and and as a musician it's the tool yeah from the musician point of view it is a scalable driver as well so you can create tiny demo music with it with a very economic cpu usage and small size it has a midi interface hardware midi interface so, so you can use your computer 64 as a synth you can import midi import xm files into it uh, three channel once of course you can import GoTracker to files. It's very simple to use. So maybe it's the workflow winner, but not necessarily the sound winner, because I think Seed Factory 2, GoTracker 2, and, and Seed does it sound better. Not the most randomistic one, because uh, Defmon is absolutely a UFO. So uh, it's not best in all areas, but uh, the combined things, I think this tracker is the best of sort of Jack of all trades. Yes, totally agreed, and that was a nice summary. Okay, so we can agree that if someone wants to start with C64 and it's a musician, Seed Wizard can be a tool for that. Yes, it's a native C64 editor. You have to run it on the real C64 or under an emulator. Yep. However, once you did that, you have everything at hand. Everything to start from scratch, help, and various composer tools, everything is in there. Yeah, and uh, we haven't mentioned the detailed uh, user's manual. It is an awesome user's manual. Yes, I keep using it because I tend to forget the <laughs> the commands and, and, and the effects. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with Seed Wizard. And yeah, conclusion is that Seed Wizard is, is the top one to both of us. It's a well-deserved first place and congratulations to Hermit. Uh, we would give you an award if we could. Maybe we should. Yeah, we'll give him a lemon. It's, uh, <laughs> it's ours. Hungarian <laughs> orange. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next time we meet him. Sure. Spoiler alert. Hermit, you're going to receive a lemon from us. A real lemon. All right. So we have uh, this ranking sheet of Commodore 64 trackers, but uh, please do not regard this list as some sort of, uh, you know, general truth or something. Um, it's just the input of two people, Vincenzo and me. That's why it would have been useful to have other people in the challenge, you know, to hear about different opinions. But unfortunately it didn't happen. Still, I think it's useful to give some basic outline of what is what, considering Commodore 64 trackers. So all in all, after successfully passing this challenge, it's been an immense amount of fun. And despite the fact that we may sounded like a little bit angry at some things in case of short periods, even that was fun. So driving old cars is fun, driving new cars is fun. They just stink a bit. Uh, yeah, but, you know, it, it's uh, an attribute of the actual era, so... Uh, yeah, definitely, and this order of the editors and tools just shows that the more modern the tool is higher on the top. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Higher on the list, yeah, 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 definitely, because, yeah, the tools that we used back in the 90s or even earlier, that... They are just not up to the standard nowadays. Things have changed, we have changed, and, and, and it just shows that we prefer different things. And it's nice to see that uh, despite the fact that Commodore 64 is obsolete for 33 years at least, maybe even more. Yeah, that... this, this year is 40 years old. Goodness. It's been released 40 years ago. Congratulations and happy birthday. It was in January, early January, I think, when they announced the C64, then they released it in somewhere in the summer. Wow, 82, man, now I'm realizing it. So it's awesome that people are still keeping on developing stuff on Commodore 64 and if nothing else, because I'm stupid and I forget things, this thing was obvious that's how much trackers developed and evolved during the years. And even now, they come out 
know some things because uh, maybe Seed Factory 2 is the latest yes. one. And it's still in development. It's still so in development. It just shows how much love is going into the C64 and the scene. And not just about the uh, music and the music tools, but everything else is still still alive and kicking. So it's very, very good to be part of it because I feel proud and, and happy to add my part to this history. And it's, it's a very, very rich history. And great, great people. We just only scratched the surface of the surface when we spoke about some other fellow musicians and coder guys, because it's a very, very great, very rock and roll, actually, a bunch of people still doing this. Yes, it's a great honor to be part of the demo scene and part of the Commodore 64 scene. And, well, at this point, I would like to thank you to a lot of guys that they helped me during the years and, and during this challenge last year. Necropolo, without you, I think I would just gave up in the middle of the year because you were always there and I, I'm very happy that we supported each other and it's, it just gave some power to finish everything because otherwise I might be too weak. It's nice to say that, but uh, I'm sure that you would finish without me anyway, but uh, it's, it's very nice to say, say that. And thank you for this challenge. It was awesome and uh, it was uh, such a good way to cooperate uh, behind the scene. It didn't stop there in the Commodore 64 music creation, but we started an online racing team for a while. <laughs> but that's a completely different story. So yeah, it's the absolute surprise and, and meaning behind this. Just, you know, having friends and doing some great things together. It, it's the whole, it's the whole, whole thing. It's the most important thing in all the scene stuff or Commodore 64 stuff, but it brings together great people. I don't know if I'm great, but you know, having fun. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think about <laughs> if you are great or not, but uh, I'm not going to say anything right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. And I'm not sure when we are going to release this, what we were just talking about, but spoiler alert, there is a music disc work in progress behind the scenes. We are compiling all of these tracks. It's actually overall 27 tracks that we made throughout the year. The two of us in every month, Dablondi in February, Jammer in May and Spider Jerusalem in December. So overall this is 27 tracks and it's gonna be in a music disc uh, and we are going to release it soon or if this podcast comes out later then the music disc is already released. Yeah, and we're going to put a link into the description. By the way, some awesome people are working on the coding and graphics side. Do you want well. to spoil it? If this podcast will be released before, then not. Okay. Then we cut it here. Okay. But if it comes out later, let's reveal. Okay. So, on the coding side of the music disc, we have Trap from Bonsai and Visage from Lethargy. The graphics and animations, because it's gonna be animated as well. We have the Sarge from Fairlight. And I already mentioned the musicians' names. We have on the directory art of the disc, uh, we have Grass from Lethargy. And here I would like to mention Poison as well, because he supported us with the great graphics that we used in the monthly releases. And yeah, this is the bunch of the guys that worked on it and I'm really thankful for having all of them all on board and supporting my stupid idea of this challenge and this was fun and thank you, thank you very much. So thank you guys, you are legends. And I think we can say here that this is the end of the podcast, end of the recording and thank you for listening, thank you for paying attention to this. I'm not going to say see you next time because I'm not sure if there is going to be a next time. Definitely not in 2022. But if you feel like making Commodore 64 music, maybe you should try at least one tracker because it's immense fun. Yes, and I think it's safe to say that either of us are happy to help with any questions if there is anything regarding any of these trackers or Go Tracker or Seed Factory or whatever you want to use. Just, you know, send us an email, ping us on Discord or on Facebook or whatever. Find a way and we are happy to help. Sure thing. So, Necro out.
Vincenzo out. Thank you. See and you around. See you guys.